Welcome to the Stoffel Systems Insights video series. I'm Eric Stoffel, president of Stoffel Systems. The topic of today's video is the state of charge of a battery pack as estimated by a BMS. So what is the state of charge, or SOC? So it's very simple. The state of charge is defined as the capacity remaining so the total capacity in amp hours or coulombs that you can discharge over the total capacity of the battery pack. So let's give an example. So if we had a battery pack that was say a 100 amp hour battery pack, total capacity, and we had 70 amp hours left to discharge, that would give us a state of charge of 70%. So this would mean that if we fully charge the battery pack up to the full 100 amp hours and then discharge 30 amp hours, we would have 70 amp hours or 70% of the capacity remaining. Now it's very important to note that this is in units of amp hours, not in units of energy. And why is that important? Well, if we look at the discharge curve, for a lithium ion battery cell, or battery pack for that matter, with voltage here on the uh, y-axis, and on the x-axis we have amp hour discharged, what does the curve typically look like? So for most lithium ion batteries, for example like an NMC or LCO type chemistry, you would expect to see a curve like this and it falls off towards the end. And so Typically, this is about 4.2 volts per cell, and the end of discharge is 2.5 volts per cell. This could be a little different for different chemistries, but the point is the same. In general, you have a varying downward facing slope for the voltage as you discharge capacity out of the pack. So for example, if I took the 50% point for the amp hours discharged, so if we took the example above and said that this was 100 amp hours, or 100%, and this was 50 amp hours, this is zero, then this would be the 50% state of charge point. Which means that we've discharged 50 amp hours out of 100 amp hours, and we have 50 amp hours left to go before the battery reach, reaches its termination voltage. So one thing to notice is that, look at the areas under these relative curves. One side is bigger than the other. So for example, there's a lot more energy on the left side of this line than on the right side of the line. And why is that important? Because when you confuse state of charge with a fuel gauge algorithm, this happens. Which is typically, if you want to get a fuel gauge, if you want to use a fuel gauge, for example, from electric vehicle application or most applications, you're more interested in the energy available as opposed to the capacity. So for example, if we were doing an electric vehicle um, design and we were trying to determine, okay, this is a 200 mile range. At what state of charge would you have 100 miles of range remaining? Well, look at this. The balance between this side and this side is clearly imbalanced because the voltage is higher in the lower, in the higher states of charge and the voltage is lower in the lower states of charge. So it's important to introduce the concept of SOEE or SOC based on energy. So we denote this as follows. Let me use a black pen for this. So SOC, C for capacity, or SOC, E for energy. And these are different. And this is actually what most applications are interested in, because this is actually the more accurate fuel gauge algorithm that tells you how much expected runtime, use, distance, range you have remaining. So let's look, about, look at this example again. If we say, okay, where is the actual 50% SOCE point on this? Well, that would be where we would have approximately 50% of the area under the curve on the left side of the line as on the right side. That would be somewhere more like here. Say that this corresponds to a point of 42% SOCC, but this equals 50% SOCE. 
So it's very important to understand the distinction between energy states of charge fuel gauge algorithms and capacity states of charge. In a future video, we'll discuss how the state of charge is actually calculated. It typically has a number of more sophisticated elements, but for the purposes of today, I do want to discuss Coulomb counting, which is the primary way that state of charge is calculated. So as I mentioned earlier, in this example, we have 100 amp hours and we discharge 30 amp hours to have 70 amp hours remaining, which means we're at a state of charge of 70%. But how did we determine that we discharged 30 amp hours? Well, from the first video, we can remember that a BMS typically has a current sensor, either a shunt or a Hall effect device that can monitor the current flowing in or out of the battery pack. And what are you doing to determine amp hours? Since amp hours are in units of current times time, we are actually performing an integration called Coulomb counting. So this is your current and this is time. So say that we have a curve that looks like this. That is how much charge, that's how much current at any given time is coming out of the pack. The area under the curve corresponds to the actual capacity removed. So this is in units of amp hours. And this is what Coulomb counting does. Coulomb counting is basically looking at every single slice in a time slice integration fashion, multiplying the current times the time interval and summing that up to get an approximation of the integral of this function. And what that does is that gives us an accurate estimate of amp hours, which gives us a basis for SOC. Now, one of the things to note about Coulomb counting and current sensing is that the current sensor has drift and integration error. So you're not going to get perfect alignment of all your sensing with the actual current spikes itself. So it's important to note that oftentimes you will also need what's called an OCV or open cell voltage lookup to compare what you're integrating with your actual voltage. So we'll look over here. I'll draw on this plot. Voltage times I'm going to introduce a new term called depth of discharge. Depth of discharge is the inverse of state of charge. So for example, at 70% SOC, you would have a depth of discharge of 30%. So for example, 30% SOC, or depth of discharge, 60% depth of discharge, and say this is 100%. The voltage is going to go like this. So when the pack has been at rest for a considerable period of time, what you do is the BMS will look up with a lookup table or something similar to see what the open circuit voltage of the cell is for a given temperature. And then it will equate that or determine what the corresponding state of charge or depth of discharge is for that. And then it will reseed the SOC function so that you have a basis upon which to get an accurate understanding of where you need to start Coulomb counting again. And this is very important because you don't want to have a fuel gauge algorithm that gets off. So you can imagine how frustrating it would be if you had, say you're driving along and all of a sudden you went from 30% to 0% state of charge immediately because there was an inaccurate estimation. It would leave you stranded, it leads to range anxiety, all sorts of problems like that. So the benefit of having both uh, open circuit voltage lookup and accurate Coulomb counting is that you can actually ensure a high degree of accuracy for the state of charge algorithm and the state of charge energy algorithm such that your results are expected and you have reliable and predictable operation of your battery pack. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.